Hello, my name is Marilyn, and I'll be talking about insect pests of cotton. Cotton is a soft, fluffy staple fiber that grows in a ball or protective capsule around the seeds of cotton plants of the genus Gossypium. The fiber is almost pure cellulose. Under natural conditions, the cotton balls will tend to increase the dispersion of the seeds. There are four commercially grown species of cotton. Gossypium hirsutum, Gossypium berbatans, Gossypium arbotum, and Gossypium herbaceum. Hirsutum is an upland cotton and it is native to Central America, Mexico, the Caribbean, and Southern Florida and it holds 90% of world production. Cotton is used to make a number of textile products including clothes, towels, robes, and demi for jeans. It's also used to make bed sheets, socks, and underwear. In addition to textile industry, cotton is used in fishing nets, coffee filters, tents, explosive manufacturers such as gunpowder. The cottonseed is used to produce cottonseed oil, which after refining can be consumed by humans like any other vegetable oil. The cottonseed meal that is left generally is fed to livestock. Therefore, cotton is one of the important plants used by people as it spaces a wide range of products. However, on the other hand, cotton is susceptible to a wide range of insect pests. Among the most destructive are the cotton ballworm, aphids, and ball weevil. Cotton ballworm belongs to class Insecta, order Lepidoptera, family Noctuidae, and genus Helicoverpa and this remains a major pest on cotton. They, there are two species, Helicoverpa armigera and Helicoverpa punctigera. They are very similar in both appearance and the damage they cause to cotton. In cotton, all stages of plant growth may be attacked but reproductive tissue is preferred. Seedlings can be tipped out when terminal buds are eaten. Chewing damage to squares and small balls may cause them to shed and chewing damage to maturing balls may prevent normal development and can lead to secondary fungal infections such as ball rot. Therefore, regular monitoring of the crop for the presence of larvae and damage is necessary in order to make timely decisions on control. Levicoverpa armigera developed resistance against most insecticides in the late 1990s. In order to prevent insecticides resistance, the cotton industry has developed the insecticide resistant management strategy. This strategy is reviewed annually to delay development of resistance of armigera to conventional insecticides. Moreover, post-harvest cultivation to reduce the overwintering stage of Helicorpha is one of the most important cultural control practices available. Cultivation to a depth of at least 10 centimeters will damage or disturb pupae seal their emergence tunnels, and trap emerging moth. Cultivation also leaves survivals open to attack by birds, mice, airwigs, and wasp parasites. Aphids belong to class Insecta, order Hemiptera, and superfamily Ephidoidea. The cotton aphids, Aphids gossypii, is the most common aphid pest. Aphids cause early to late season damage to terminals, leaves, buds, and stems and are known to transmit cotton bunchy top disease. The honeydew secreted by aphids can contaminate lint once balls begin to open. As management, controlling weeds that serve as alternative hosts for aphids including marshmallow, cape weed, and thorn apple is available. Sprout and volunteer cotton should be controlled as they are winter hosts and may also carry over a CBT disease. Cotton aphid has developed widespread resistance to a number of insecticides, so it should adhere to the cotton insecticide resistant management strategy. Ball weevil, Anthonymus grandis, is beetle of the insect family, Curculionidae, order Coleoptera class insecta. It's a cotton pass in North America, introduced to the United States from Mexico in the 1890s, 
the boll weevil was a severe agricultural pest for nearly 90 years, until the launch of an aggressive multi-year eradication program in 1978. The boll weevil lives in and around areas where cotton is cultivated. In the spring, it mates and develops inside the cotton plant. It spends the winter in trash and leaf litter in the surrounding area. The boll weevil lives and feeds only in cotton and closely related plants. They eat in seed pods and buds of the cotton flower. The size of the mature boll weevil varies according to the amount of food it receives during its larval state, but it averages about 6 mm including the long curved snout, which is about one half the body length. Females deposit between about 100 to 300 eggs in cotton buds or fruit. An average of 2 to 3 weeks is required for an egg to develop into an adult, and there may be up to 10 generations each year. The larvae live entirely within the cotton ball, destroying not only the seeds but also the surrounding cotton fibers. Because the larvae and pupae remain inside the cotton balls for the, their entire period of development, the application of insecticides at that time is ineffective. Boll weevil can destroy entire cotton crops. When the balls are infested with weevils, they turn yellow and fall off the plant, ruining the cotton fibers. If cotton is heavily infested, the plants may still grow, but produce few balls, which are the parts of the plant that produce the cotton fibers that we use. The ball weevil is an infamous pest that has been the bane of the co cotton farmers throughout the United States since it was accidentally introduced from Mexico. Boll weevil migrated from Mexico to the U.S. and spread rapidly throughout the cotton belt. Since then, it has cost America's cotton producers more than 15 billion from yield losses and costs to control the insect pest. In 1958, the National Cotton Council officially recognized the economic havoc the boll weevil was wrecking on U.S. cotton production and in late 1970s, the National Boll Weevil Eradication Program was launched. The Boll Weevil Eradication Program is a program sponsored by the United States Department of Agriculture that has sought to eradicate the boll weevil in the cotton growing areas of the United States. It's one of the world's most successful implementations of integrated pest management. Three main techniques are employed over a three to five year period. Pheromone traps for detection, cultural practices to reduce the weevil's food supply, and methylthean treatments. The program almost progressively, slowly, but effectively completely eradicated the boll weevil from cotton producing states, primarily through aerial release of the insecticide melathion. The boll weevil infestation is estimated to have caused crop loss of 30 to 50 percent in infested areas. The eradication program led to increased crop yields by at least 10% and a dramatic decrease in the use of insecticides 40 to 100%, leading to a reduction in production costs. In 2013, Texas was the only state to still have areas with boll weevil infestations. The boll weevil infestation caused many farmers to realize the value of crop rotation and the need for crop diversification rather than total dependence on cotton. There is a boll weevil monument in the city of Enterprise, Alabama. It's built in 1919 to commemorate the economic diversification that was required after boll weevils devastated the cotton crops. It's a prominent landmark and tribute erected by the citizens of Enterprise to show their appreciation to an insect for its profound influence on areas agriculture and economy. Hailing Beetle as a herald of prosperity, it stands as the world's only monument built to honor an agricultural pest. These are my references. Thank you for listening.